Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm very excited to be testing this bike out for all of you to show you how it performs. This is by far the most powerful bike that I have tested to date. This is the Hemiway Cobra Pro King Cobra. Now they do also make a forest Cobra that looks like a camouflage snake skin, which is really awesome as well. This is the carbon fiber one. And like I said, the most powerful one I've tested to date. And guys, I've tested a lot of bikes. This thing has a massive 1000 watt Bafang mid-drive motor. And we're gonna put it through its paces today and see how well this bike performs going up hills and a lot of different scenarios. If you've seen my last hill test video I did on this hill behind me where I took 19 different e-bikes up this hill with just throttle only to see which one would make it to the top. Only one of those actually made it up over. A few others got really close, but that's gonna be the first test we do with this today is taking it up that hill to see if it will make it up with throttle only. And I'm assuming it will because this 1000 watt Bafang mid-drive motor is a beast. So without further ado guys, let's get into it. Do this first, then we're gonna come back go over all the specs and features of this bike so you guys can see what it's all about and what it comes with for the price. By the way, you really should not never pedal up hills. If you're going up a hill, I would definitely help pedal it. You can rip things apart, rip your chains, rip your gears, rip, uh, destroy your motors. So definitely pedal and help it going up hills. It's gonna help out a lot just with a little bit of effort. And that goes with any e-bikes. There will be affiliate links down below in the description of this video. So if you guys are interested in picking one of these up after watching this video and feel like it's the bike for you, please consider using that link and it will help support the channel. If I can get any coupon codes, I'll put them down there as well so you guys can save a few bucks. I'm not gonna have this video out by Black Friday sales, but they are gonna have some pretty good sales. Not sure how long they're gonna extend to, but I'll put all that information down below in the description of this video, as well as all my accessories, which I'll show you guys later on. One really cool one that I actually just got to hide an air tag, which is pretty awesome, as well as all my accessories. So if you guys are interested in any of those, make sure you guys check those out as well. Now let's get into it. I can't wait. All right, guys, here we go. Gear one, throttle only. Oh man, easily up that hill. Now let's start midway up and see how it does. If you had to start on the middle of the hill. Throttle only, right up it. And for all of you that said in my hill test video that your mid drive would go up this with just throttle, you were right, and this one does. So if you guys need this power, stick around, check out the rest of this video, and if you find it enjoyable and helpful, please make sure you guys hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys around in some future videos. Let's get into it, guys. All right, so now we're gonna go over what you get with this bike for the price tag of $3,999, which is what it's currently at. And they do actually have a coupon code as of me filming this for 300 off. Like I said, I don't know if I'll have this video out by the time that coupon's expired, but that'll all be down below. Now, when I first got this bike, I did my research, looked all over online and trying to find a different bike that had the same features and specs as this for a cheaper price. And I gotta tell you guys, it does seem a little bit pricey at almost $4,000. But for what you get with this thing, it's going to be hard for you to find a bike similar to the specs and features of this for a cheaper price. And if you guys know of any with the dual air suspension, 20 amp hour battery, Bafang 1000 watt motor, and just all the things that this thing comes with. If you guys know of any bikes that have similar specs and features for the money, put it down below in the comments and let me know because I'd be curious to check those out as well. And when you start comparing it to some other bikes that are out there, friends of ours just bought two specialized bikes one paid over six thousand dollars for the one and the other one was over seven thousand dollars so when you start looking at what those bikes come with it has a smaller battery than this smaller motor than this no throttle and things like that and it's a lot more money now I'll grant you it is a lighter bike and you may be able to do more with it downhill than you can with this and it has a better suspension on it but there's a big difference there in price as well so i feel like for the price you do get a good bit with your money on this bike and one of those trade-offs is this bike is going to be a little bit heavier so when i weighed it on my scale it weighed in at 85.6 pounds with the battery and the battery was 11.2 pounds of that because like i said it does have a pretty massive 20 amp hour battery 
And these bigger tires are gonna make it weigh a little bit more than what some other bikes would with smaller tires, but these are gonna be really nice for loose sand and gravel, rocky terrain and off-road. It's gonna keep you up above those as you're traveling over it, so it's gonna be really nice for that. This bike is sitting on a pair of CST Roly Poly 26 by 4.8 inch tires, which is by far the biggest tires I've ever had on any e-bike that I've tested. So now let's get into some of the other specs and features of this bike. So up here on the handlebars, you have a really nice set of ergonomic locking grips. They lock on the inside, do not spin at all, which is really nice. Next to that, you have a thumb throttle and then your control pad to control your Bafang LCD display. It is a color display, which is really nice. You can see when you power it up, Bafang ultra drive system, heavy duty, powerful, high speed. Over here on the right hand side, you have a 10 speed Shimano Dior shifter, which is a trigger shifter and it leads down to the 10 speed 11 to 34 tooth cassette in the rear. Coming up the chain to a 44 tooth chain ring in the front and a large set of Welgo aluminum pedals. And it's using a Shimano D or derailleur to shift through those 10 speed gears. And I gotta tell you with this 10 speed system, even in fourth gear, I went up that hill easily with just throttle. After the clip that you guys seen at the beginning, I went up that hill probably five or six more times through different gears, just testing it out. I didn't try it in all the gears, but in fourth gear, like I said, went up it, no problem. Now there is two different modes on the display on this bike. You can hold the up button down and it goes from eco mode into sport mode. Everything turns red on the display to show you that. And then when you hold it again, it goes back to eco mode, everything turns green. Now at this point, I'm still playing around trying to figure that out, not sure exactly what difference that makes, whether it be on top speed or just in performance of the bike overall. But when I went up that hill and did that testing earlier, I was only in eco mode and it had plenty of power just in eco mode. For power, this bike's using a Bafang Ultra 1000 watt mid drive that peaks out at 1300 watts. And this Bafang motor, has 160 newton meters of torque which is insane guys my most powerful hub motor bike is rated at 96 newton meters of torque this is almost double that and it's using a 20 amp hour samsung or lg battery which is housed inside the frame here to power this cobra pro the king cobra and like i said beautiful bike has a nice carbon fiber wrap on it it's not true carbon fiber but it is aluminum and wrapped the other one is like a snakeskin, looks really cool in person. When I first looked at these bikes, I didn't realize the other one was a snakeskin, but if you see some up close pictures of it, it's pretty awesome. The next exciting part is this bike's using a dual air suspension. It has an inverted fork on the front and an air shock in the rear. Up here on the top of the shock, you have a compression adjustment. Now we'll go over that a little bit later. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of adjustability there. You can lock it out and you have tons of clicks on here, but it didn't seem like they were doing too much. I'm gonna have to play around with that a little more until you get towards the end. And then the last few clicks seems like it stiffens it up a little bit on the compression. You do have a preload air fitting underneath here so you can add air if you need to. And then you also have a rebound adjustment underneath here. You can spin this red knob to give you a slower or faster rebound. So really nice adjustability on the front shock there. On the rear shock, you have a pretty good adjustability as well. This is a DNM R038 shock. It says max 275 PSI. You have a lockout here on the center, which really stiffens it up and almost locks it out completely. You have a rebound knob here in the center, which you could spin to get your rebound to come up faster or slower. And then obviously you have your air valve here that you can add air or release some air for your preload if you're a heavier rider. Now this bike's payload will support heavier riders up to 400 pounds, so that's really nice to see. But if you are a heavier rider closer to that weight, you're probably gonna wanna add some air in the suspension. If you're a shorter rider, this bike might be okay for you as well. The minimum seat height is 33 and a half inches and the maximum seat height is 40 inches. I'm just under five foot eight with an inseam of 30 inches and i ride with the seat post up about four inches and it seems really good for me so i was really surprised i thought this bike was going to be a lot taller than it actually is so really nice that you can get a low seat height if you need it now one thing i wish i would have seen in this bike would have been a dropper post would have been nice if it had the cable management up top with a lever where you can drop the seat or raise it as you're riding it that way if you were going downhill and hitting a lot of bumps you can get that seat down so it's not interfering with you when you're getting on some aggressive trails that might be something i try to upgrade in the future i might try to mount the dropper post in there and run the cable down through the bottom 
and up through the frame. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that or not, but if I do upgrade that, I'll make sure to put all the links down below to what I used and I'll probably make a video on it. So stick around if you wanna see that. And the rear suspension is using a four link suspension, which is really nice. Seems really heavy duty. Nothing seems to let, have play in it. Uh, I was beating the crap out of this bike, jumping it, uh, jumping it downhill and just a bunch of different things and everything seems nice and tight, nice and secure. No issues at all there with the suspension. Very heavy duty looking. One thing to note about the front suspension, whenever you guys install the front wheel, you may have to turn this mount on this hydraulic cable out a little bit because being that this front fork is inverted, every time it compresses, it actually makes this cable loop out further. And it was hitting my spokes earlier, making a noise. Now, some of you older people probably know exactly what I'm talking about because we used to do this as kids, put something like a zip tie or whatever in there to make noise as you're riding down the road. But you definitely don't want that to happen with your hydraulic brake cable. So just have to turn that out, make sure it's adjusted so that it doesn't hit your spokes. And I haven't had a problem with it since then. But it took me a little while to figure out what it was. I thought it was the front brakes. I adjusted them a million times and then realized that that's what the problem was. So might save you guys a little bit of time. Now, one thing that I did notice about this suspension when I was jumping it down the hill over there was there is about five inches of travel here, but that front wheel did seem like it came up almost all the way and possibly hit this. Now, I did have this compression a little bit loose. I'm still playing around with that, trying to dial it in correctly, but I may need to add a little bit of air there for the preload. And during this testing, guys, I'm between 165 to 170 pounds, putting on a few pounds now that it's going into the winter time. Usually I hover around 165. For stopping power, this bike's using a pair of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, coming down to 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. And it seems to have really good stopping power. Right here on the frame is where you have your speed sensor. As this rolls around, it passes this for your speed which is similar to other mid drives that I've tested. And over here on the right hand side of the frame underneath, you do have a shift sensor. So as you're shifting through those gears, it will pause that motor, but it's really nice the way it does it. It actually shifts right through them very smoothly. And I'll show you guys an example of that later on in the video. Up here on the handlebars, you also have a cheap bell. I'll definitely be upgrading this and I'll show you guys why here later on. The wiring on the bike is really nice and minimalistic. It goes into the frame here. You don't see any wiring at all down below, just a little bit up front here. So really nice, really sleek looking. The only thing is when I put a dropper post in here, if I upgrade that in the future, it may be a little difficult for me to route that wire in the middle, but I definitely don't want to run the wire up the frame. I want to keep it nice and clean like it is here from the factory. Has a nice heavy duty adjustable kickstand. The charge port for the batteries here on the left side of the frame, you could charge the battery in the bike or you could take the battery out and charge it out of the bike. Has a nice set of water bottle holders here in the center of the frame. So you can mount a water bottle or a jug, nice to see. And it does have a nice dual beam headlight in the front. There's really no brake light that's ran off the eternal battery, but they do give you a light that clips underneath your seat. I don't actually have it installed right now. It's just a cheap light that clips under there. At least they give you something so that people don't rear end you when you're flying through the woods. And what's nice about the front headlight up here on the display, there is a light sensor. So it turns that front light on automatically as it gets dusk. Now on the back of the frame here, it does look like they have a mount for a rear rack, which is really nice to see. I haven't seen anything listed on their website as far as a rear rack for this goes, but they are coming out with some different accessories. So hopefully that's one of them. And they are gonna have a huge sale on accessories on Amazon if you buy a bike during their Black Friday event. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get that deal if you didn't buy a bike, but something worth checking out if you guys are interested in getting some accessories for your Hemiway bikes. And again, I'll put all that down below in the description. All right, so now we're gonna go up this hill that I do in all my tests. Now my fastest hub motor bike will go up this hill at 11 miles per hour with a full battery and just throttle. We're gonna test out this mid drive right now. My battery is sitting at 85%. Normally I do this at 100, but I drove it around for a while. I'm gonna go up it in third gear because I'm pretty sure it has enough power. One thing about the gear shifter up here, you don't ever really know what gear you're in. It doesn't say anything up here as far as what you're in. Just put it in what you're comfortable with and go with that. So we're in third gear right now, starting out. Just gonna give it full throttle and see how fast we can go up this hill. Like I said, my fastest bike never drops below 11 miles per hour. Let's see what this baby will do. 15, 14, 13. 
never dropped below 13 miles an hour and that was in gear three all right we're gonna try this one more time in first gear here we go in third gear it never dropped below 13. Fourteen, thirteen. So it was about the same, 13 miles an hour. My fastest bike yet coming up that hill. And that's it, like I said, between 81 to 85% battery here. Usually I do that at a fully charged battery. All right, and one more time in second gear. Let's see if we can beat the 13 miles an hour. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. So it looks like it's going to stay at thirteen no matter if you're in first, second, or third gear. So you can see this bike definitely has plenty of power. This is the fastest one yet coming up that hill at 13 miles an hour, like I said. But we're going to go down, we're going to find some steeper hills off road trail, uh, see what we can find, and I have one in mind that I tried to go up on the Varla scooter, but we're going to take it up that and see if we can make it. We're going to also be testing out the top speed here coming up. But you can see that this is a torque sensing mid drive, which means the more power that you put into the pedals, the more you'll get out of it. It's not a cadence sensor where you start spinning the cranks and it just takes off. I'm in pedal assist five, able to travel at a nice slow speed here. Got my son with me back there somewhere, if you guys can see him. He's going to be my cameraman once we get to that hill, but really nice. Uh, even though you cannot go in the settings as far as I know and adjust your pedal assist levels, it is nice that it has that torque sensor. So the more effort you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. Really nice to make it feel more like a regular bike when you're riding and it, you're going to feel more one with the bike if that makes sense. So these brakes I'll show you here are really nice. That's the front brake there. Uh, throttle's on the left, that's why I'm filming on this side. So it, it always confuses me or messes me up when I'm filming with my right hand. Uh, but I have to do that when the throttle's on the left. But the brakes seem to have very good stopping power. These Tektro hydraulic brakes, no squeaks and no squeals. And even with these humongous tires, it's still slowing me down really good. All right, you can see here, I'm in pedal assist one and I'm going about eight miles an hour, eight to nine miles per hour. And obviously the more, like I said, I put into it, if I push harder, that motor is gonna kick in more and give me more power. And then if you up the pedal assist levels, right now I'm in five, it'll actually, uh, the more you put into it, it'll give you more power and get you up to a higher speed. Let's shift up to the highest gear here. This is now 10th gear. Really good cadence so far, 23 miles an hour. And you always have full-time throttle, which is really nice. So you can override that torque sensor anytime you want if you don't want to put any effort in. But I got to tell you guys, this really feels really good with this torque sensor. And how much effort I have to put in to get up here and pedal assist five. Not really putting a lot of effort in. Cadence feels really, really good but I can always just give it throttle if I don't want to put as much effort into it. So I'm going to go ahead downshift here. It cut that motor. All right, guys, well, that was just a fail. My son was like, whoa, stop, something fell off your bike. The little cap for adjusting the rebound that goes up underneath here. The screw came out of the center and it fell off. Can't find the screw. Luckily, we found this. Hopefully I can get another screw to go back in there, but make sure you guys take that screw out and lock tight it in there if you get one of these so that you don't lose your rebound adjusting cap. All right, so let's try out the stopping power. 23, 24, 25. As soon as I hit this yellow pole, I'll hit the brakes, 26, 27, and I could lock them up easily. I, I didn't want to skid there, but I could have definitely locked them up very easily. And this is going downhill, so very good stopping power with these brakes. You can hear very quiet. Very nice. All right, guys, so let's see how fast this bike is. I'm in PAS5. We're going to do just throttle. Let's shift up into the highest gear. Twenty-three. 
122 miles an hour. Now let's shift it up into sport mode and see how fast it will go in sport mode. So now it's in sport mode, it looks like about 22. So let's just try to pedal and see what we can do. It's looking like about the same, 23 miles an hour. There's got to be a way to unlock this speed to go faster. So I just looked on their website and it says that the speed is 15.5 miles per hour, which is US legal. So I'm not sure what that's about. Obviously it goes faster than that, but we're going to see how fast we can get it going in gear one. So let's try in gear one and see how fast we can get it going in gear one. Looks like about 18 miles an hour in gear one, 19 miles an hour. Let's shift up a few gears. Let's see how fast we can get it going. 21, 22. Shift up to 10th. Looks like about 22 miles per hour. So maybe this bike is limited to 22 miles per hour. Very smooth here in 10th gear. Hardly sounds like it's putting any uh, strain on the motor whatsoever. It's looking like it's hovering between 250 to 500 watts of output, which is shown here on the display. Now that display only goes up to reading 750 watts, but this does produce 1300 watts peak output. Very smooth, comfortable ride, just not super fast so far. But like I said, I'll update you guys down below in the comments or in the video description what I find out about the speed. All right, here we go, guys. I got the first hill I'm gonna try. It's very steep and there's a rock sticking out in the middle. I'm in pedal assist five, first gear. Oh man, right up it. I did not think that that was gonna go up it. That went up way easier than I thought. I mean, this thing is pretty steep. And like I said, there was a rock at the top. Let's see how let's see how steep this is. I can't even stop going down it. Very nice. Wow, that was amazing. I'll show you guys exactly how steep it is. So there's the rock sticking out. And it looks like 32 degrees. 32 degrees there, and I think it gets steeper up here. About the same, 32 degrees. So, minus the few rocks sticking out, 32 degree hill, pedaled right up it. Steep? Yep, definitely <laughs> really steep. You almost can't even walk up it. All right, here we go on the next one. A little bit of off-road riding over some bumps and there's a very steep hill up here to show you guys. And this is what I love about the suspension on this bike, guys. Very steep hill here. And it's pretty long. Right up it. No problem. Back down it. Suspension's nice. Very nice, guys. Very nice. All right, so I played around with the control pad here and figured out how to get into the settings. And I changed the max speed. I think it was set to somewhere around 19.8 miles per hour. I changed it to 69 or 62 miles per hour, but I'll show you guys how to do that. Hey everyone, I wanted to just jump in here real quick and let you guys know that I reached out to Hemiway to ask them how to unlock this bike before I actually figured out how to. And their response to me was that it comes legally set at 22 miles per hour and can reach speeds up to 25 miles per hour. However, they don't recommend it and can't provide me with any information on how to unlock it. So I just wanted to mention that. 
it will work on my bike. Can't guarantee it's gonna work on yours. If you receive it, like I said, sometimes companies change things, lock things, unlock things. So just wanted to mention that there. And they also wanted me to mention that they are setting up a string of dealer networks across the United States with over 200 retail locations. However, take that with a grain of salt, guys, because I did my research. You guys know that I like to be very thorough in my videos, especially when talking about stuff, or I usually don't mention if I don't know anything about it. So I went on their website, called a few different dealers from their dealer network through the map that they have on there. And two of those actually told me that were local to me that they ended up not going with Hemiway as dealers and they were waiting to be taken off of that list. Another one didn't answer, they wasn't open yet. Another one was just a bar. So I'm not sure if it's just a bar area that has bikes as well. A lot of them are bow shops or gun shops. So not guaranteed that they're gonna have a service department. They're not gonna be a huge store like their main store out in San Diego, California. So just keep that in mind. You might wanna do your research, give them a call, see what bikes they have, if you could test ride them or if they have service departments, if that's something that's gonna be a deciding factor for you when making your purchase, because they may not be what you think and they may not be a huge e-bike store like you guys are thinking. So just make sure you guys do your research. That is awesome that they're trying to get their name out there and trying to set up a string of dealers across the US. And like I said, some will have service departments, but you should do your research and call beforehand just to see. Now let's get back to the video. So to get into your settings here, and you'll need to know this if you wanna reset your trip meter, you just double press the I button that takes you into your general settings there. Hit the I button when you're on the display setting. Then you can go in here and change a bunch of different stuff. The only thing that I would change if I was you possibly would be the auto off mode if you don't want your bike to shut off after five minutes. I changed it to nine. You could change your power view on the display to show wattage output or amps. It shows 30 amps or up to 750 watts depending on what you choose you can change your battery level to display in percent or into voltage either way so we're going to go ahead and set it to voltage there so i can keep an eye on the volts trip resets here that's how you do that al sensitivity that'll be the light sensor here where it kicks on your headlight automatically when it gets dark password set your clock wheel diameter speed limit here the max you could set it to is 62.1 miles per hour we're going to go ahead back back out of there and now we're going to test the speed again and see if we can get it faster than 22 miles per hour keep in mind guys make sure you check your local restrictions local laws you may only be able to unlock this speed if you're riding off road and please be mindful and cautious of other pedestrians and riders and just be respectable when you're riding. Know when you can and can't go fast. All right, so after I just played around with those settings, I just realized it's now showing up to 1500 watts. I could have swore that said 750 watts before I went in the settings and was messing around with stuff. So that's gonna be nice to see that it actually shows you all the way up to 1500 now. It's supposed to have a peak output of 1300. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that when we hit some hills. All right, back to the spot I did the last test. We are in gear 10. I'm just gonna do some throttle only and see if we can beat that 22 to 23 miles per hour. And we already are. So there we go. This is just throttle only, 29. This is looking like 29 miles per hour is gonna be the max speed with throttle. Now let's just pedal, 30. So I would say 29 to 30 miles per hour. Let's bump it up into sport mode and see if anything changes. And it doesn't look like anything changed. So very nice guys, at least 29 to 30 miles per hour max speed. All right, so definitely way faster at 29 to 30 miles an hour now with just throttle or with pedal assist. And cadence wasn't too bad in 10th gear at top speed either, guys. It's pretty nice. You can see the cadence on my legs here, 27, 28. Feels really nice. 30. Really good cadence. Feels very comfortable at that speed pedaling. All right, guys, here we go. Back up this hill, I'm just using the pedals and really nice on that torque sensor, guys. You, I mean, I'm barely putting any effort into it going slow, but you can see if I put more effort in here, it's gonna take off and start going. And I am in first gear, which is gonna be the easiest to pedal and give it the best mechanical advantage in that gear. But very nice, the faster I pedal, the faster it goes. 
or I could just hit that throttle and take off up this hill. Cause this hill ain't nothing for this thousand watt Bafang mid-drive. It throws you back. I still haven't really figured out what the difference is between Eco and Sport mode. So far they feel pretty similar. So not quite sure on that. If anybody knows what the difference is on Eco or Sport mode, please let me know down below in the comments. All right, a little bit of off-road riding here. We're gonna see how this bike does. Going up through here, up some hills and the grass. So far, pretty good, sitting down on the seat. Actually, my seat's still a little bit too low. I lowered it down going up those hills. No problem here. I'm not sure exactly what gear I'm in. I think I'm in like fourth or fifth. It's using about 1400 watts, it's according to the meter. Getting some bumps there. Very nice and easy, guys. Whew. In first gear, guys, this thing just walks right up these hills like nothing. I'm hardly putting any effort in right now. Not using the throttle, just using that torque sensor. And it's powering me right up, no problem at all. All right, we're gonna try this hill again now that I adjusted speed to the max speed and we're gonna see what kind of speed we can maintain now this is after all that riding so the battery is down lower and I'm in third gear 16 15 14 13 12 so I did lose 11 I lost two miles per hour but the battery is a lot lower now than when I started but not too bad guys very impressive show you a little bit more about the front suspension and the rear suspension very nice and watch how easy I can walk up this this is with no throttle just pedaling I can almost stop and then just continue right up it so easy All right, everyone. So I think that's going to be about it for the Hemiway Cobra Pro. I hope I covered everything. And if I didn't, if I forgot something, or if you guys want to see something, please leave it down in the comments below or just leave a comment in general. I really appreciate it because it helps my channel out. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, I almost forgot to show you my new accessory that I told you about. And the reason I changed this bell up here is because this is actually an air tag holder. There's an air tag in this bell hidden. You can't even tell. Just unscrew this. There's an air tag underneath there, and that's gonna be really nice in case your bike gets stolen. You might actually have a chance at getting it back for less than $30 that the air tags cost plus the cost of that bell. And that bell is way nicer and sounds way better than the original bell, which is gonna be really nice for the bike trail as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and found it interesting and helpful. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified of future videos. Make sure you turn your notifications on on your phone so you actually do. And I will see all of you around on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.